Hello there, in today's video we are out in Manchester city centre, uh, we're going to be using some building photography uh, to turn into some low key fine art uh, that are going to make some fantastic prints. We're going to run through how I'm taking the shots, then we're going to process the shots and finally we're going to print. <music> So in an effort to keep this shoot as simple as possible today, I'm just shooting on a 40 millimeter prime, which means that I'm gonna to have to zoom with my legs. And the first shot that I'm going with is uh, this building here. Now, a couple of considerations that I'm looking at when I look at this building, as we look around it here, is where the light is hitting. So the light's actually hitting from this direction here. So I wanna bear that in mind for when I process it, because it's that light that I'm gonna accentuate, and it's the dark that is on the uh, side of the building going up on this side here, that I'm gonna use as my contrast against that. Now, the type of building that I'm looking to photograph today are a bit like these ones behind me, uh, mostly glass facades. Now, as for settings in camera, I am mostly working at f13, 1 125th per second, which on that uh, 40 millimeter lens is going to hold the image nice and still get rid of any handshake and I'm in between 160 and 200 ISO. post-processing to take these images from uh, pretty mundane to something a lot more stylish and definitely a lot more printable. Okay so we've got our fairly mundane and uh, basic photographs loaded up into Lightroom and that's uh, where we're going to start off in Lightroom. Uh, basically I'm just going to do some basic luminance adjustments, uh, bring that up to spec. Uh, I'll also just get the white balance uh, to where I want it and just check that I have my profile corrections activated which I do and I'm going to just do a quick black and white conversion and then I'm going to open it up into Photoshop and I must confess uh, this hasn't been recorded linear I made a bit of a mistake and actually uh, when I came back to do this in Photoshop I've opened up the color version not the black and white version not going to make a big difference um, and uh, everything will be the same um, other than when we swap back into Lightroom, it will be in black and white. Uh, so I've just made a copy with Command Control J. Um, and if I, if there was any mess to clear up, like there is in this image that I'm showing you on screen here, anything that I need to clean up, um, it'd be on this background copy um, that I would do those cleanups with a clone stamp tool and. Uh, or content aware fill, but on this image, it's pretty clean. So don't need to clean anything up. So we're gonna start off by making some selections and I'm gonna make selections at the start because it's gonna save us some time later on. And these selections are basically gonna act as masks um, later on. And to do the selections, I wanna do them fairly accurately. There's a hundred ways that you can make selections, uh, but for this one, I'm gonna use the pen tool because uh, we're working primarily with straight lines, which make it really, really simple and easy to do with the pen tool. So I'm just gonna pop um, points with the pen tool along the straight lines and basically connect the dots. I just add a couple at the top of the building here, just as it kind of curves around. So I'll try and get that fairly accurate. There we go. And come on down and you see there's a little bit of a bend actually in this building. Um, so just pop a point there, point there, and then really, really simply up to the top of the frame, pop one there. And across to the start we go complete uh, the selection and then what we're going to do is we're going to head up to the top left and we're going to make that pen tool into a selection. Uh, I'm not going to add any feather radius to it whatsoever. So once we've got that as a selection, as you can see here, head up, click select, 
come down to save selection and I'm going to name that sky and click OK and then that's there for later. Now I'm going to click con Command or Control D uh, to deselect that uh, selection and I'm going to reload it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Select Load Selection and I'm going to click Invert and what that will then do is it will invert that selection to now select the buildings not the sky and I can save that as a completely new selection so that will go in as buildings so now I've got two selections uh, made now the amount of selections you want to create will depend on you depend on your image um, I've got a couple more to make here so I'm going to do uh, both sides of the building um, I'm going to uh, select this lower part of the building here um, because I want to process them all very separately um, so this right side of the building here is going to be processed separately to um, the other parts of the building. Um, so let's just get that done quickly and I'm going to do it all again. Let's speed through all of this, doing exactly the same as I was before using the pen tool. Select the various areas that I want to select, save them as a selection, name them differently so I can go back to them. So I'm naming them uh, light side, dark side and front of the building. And now we've got all those selections saved. This is going to be really, really simple and easy because all we're going to do throughout this now is load those selections in and work on them individually. So basically processing different parts of the image. Um, so we're going to go to select and load selection. The first one that we're going to go and do is the sky. Um, So as you can see, I've got five different selections, sky, buildings, low building, light side, dark side. And um, the first one I'm going to choose is the sky. And uh, when I've got that, I'm just going to go to adjustments and I'm going to adjust that portion, that mask, that sky that we selected. And I'm going to pull the exposure down on it. And automatically, already, you'll start to see the image change. Now, there's no right or wrong way of how much you pull the exposure down. You can go to complete black if you want. Uh, I prefer to stay just a little bit above that, a little bit in the grayer, very dark grey um, side of things. And the fantastic thing about working like this is that ultimately you can come back at any point during your processing um, and, and redo it. So a little bit later on we might change that exposure based on um, how the rest of uh, the image comes together um, but by having it like this uh, we can come back to it so I'm just going to load in the next um, the next mask and this time we are on the dark side of the building well I've named the dark side of the building this time we're going to load in a curves adjustment that's already going to um, create a new layer and on that new layer we can then pull that curves adjustment down and it's only going to affect that selection that we've made. Right, well the next selection which we've got that's the light side and as you might have guessed with this we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to go into our adjustments panel, load in a curves adjustment and we're going to pull that curve up and that will lighten, brighten um, this part of the building, the light side load another selection and we're going to go down and we're going to choose the uh, the front of the building there and again we can pull that curves adjustment down and the image is really starting to come together now so like I said I've left this in color by mistake which is why it's looking a little bit weird you'll see it when we move it back into Lightroom pretty soon um, but what I'm going to do on uh, this atrium part of the building here is just add a bit of a gradient effect into it as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to reselect and that will automatically reselect to the selection that we've been working in so that we're only working in that selection. I'm going to come over to the left here and pick my gradient tool um, and I'm going to make sure that my gradient tool, what I want to be in is uh, my basics. I'm going to go from uh, black to nothing and I'm going to take reverse off. I'm going to make sure that my um, gradient is linear. 
and you can play around with this as much as you want. I'm just going to try a few different opacities, uh, place one on, and if I don't like it, just click Command or Control and Z, and that'll just reverse uh, the last thing that I've done. Um, so I can play around with that until I'm quite happy. I think 40% opacity looks pretty good. Um, and now I've got kind of the brightness of the building. I can come back to my sky exposure and um, just adjust that as I want. Uh, now the last selection I had was of all of the buildings. So I'm just going to load that up and that will give me all of the buildings there. I'm just going to bring a uh, curves adjustment layer in and just give, give it a little bit of um, extra contrast, create a little bit of an S curve there, pull the highlights up a little bit and the shadows down a little bit as well. And once I've done that, I'm fairly happy and I'm going to pull the image back into Lightroom. So, like I say, uh, this is the image processed in black and white, which is why it looks a little bit different. But once I've got it back into Lightroom, uh, to be perfectly honest, one of the things that I tend to do is just wait a little while, come back to it and look at it again. And I could see that uh, I wasn't quite happy with the way the building popped, so I just added a radial filter on, uh, and I added a radial filter and just popped the whites and the highlights a little bit in that area of the building and then a reverse radial filter to um, add a little bit of contrast into the um, other areas of the building, a little bit of shadows um, to contrast that pop of white against. And that gives me an image that I'm pretty ready uh, to send off to print. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the other shots that I took on the day. are ready to go into a classic black frame with a white mount but when it comes to printing your images there are a couple of things that you need to bear in mind and do before printing your images both the videos on screen are going to give you information that you might need this one is about which paper to print onto which is a vital ingredient and this one here is about soft proofing your image ready for print so they're both worthwhile watching. I've been Dave and this has been Let's Click Photography and I'll see you on the next one or one of those pretty soon. Bye.